Hi everybody, it's Tyler here at River Bots Middle School, checking in with 23382A Fifth Dimension coming out of Maryland. Inspire at Worlds last year, congratulations on that. And they built a phenomenal machine that we're gonna be talking about here on Pits and Parts. Take a look at this. I mean, I cannot believe this is a middle school team. This is straight up a V5RC, huge competitor right here. We're gonna be talking about all the different aspects that go in this robot. Of course, from their intake, drivetrain, all the way through their redirect, a lot of great sensors as well too, and so much more to learn about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. And let's talk about the uh, intake on this robot here. This is such a great, uh, awesomely built machine on here. Talking about what uh, your intake is comprised of. So our intake, um, it uses five flex wheels right here, powered by, um, powered by a motor here, uh, 600 RPM with a chain drive, a one to one ratio. So the uh, output speed is 600 RPM. Um, we have a ramp here, which is, has two pieces like this. And, and the reason why we do that is because it reaches um, less surface area than if we do a one solid piece. And um, our intake, um, when we drive into it like this, the ramp lifts it up slightly, which engages with the wheels and we can start intaking like that. And then after the intake goes in, it gets passed on to our conveyor belt stage, which, um, which is which is shared on the same axle as this, uh, which is shared on the same axle here, and uh, it's directly powered by a 600 RPM motor down here too. And um, it just grabs it just grabs the into the ring and uh, scoops it up. I like, by the way, on the front of your robot, you added in these extra uh, supports here, right? Because it gives you that extra reach, essentially, a lot of touch and own it going on too. So great thinking behind all that. Uh, also, so let's talk about your drivetrain here and a bit more of what that's comprised of. Michael, uh, walk me through uh, what's comprised in your drive. Yeah, so we have a six motor, eight wheel drive. Uh, the six motors, uh, the motors are 600 RPM with blue cartridges, geared down to 450 RPM uh, output speed. It's really fast, really reliable. It helps us move around the field really quickly. So when you're looking at it from a design perspective, what made you want to go with this motor? Like when you were thinking about strategy in the game, you're like, this is exactly what we need, sort of thing. Yeah, we uh, we want we wanted to be a really fast robot because this this year are the field's really open, so we want to go from side to side really quickly to get the corners and everything. We also have tr uh, traction wheels here to help us grip better uh, when defending the corners and. Uh, yeah. yeah, you got the Omni wheels in front. Great maneuverability overall on the field. Chloe, let's talk about your redirect arm now. Uh, we talked about the intake coming through. Uh, I watched your redirect, really cool thing, how it pops in. So walk me through how all that works and maybe any feature changes you want to make to that also. Okay, so this is our redirect. And essentially what happens is after we intake the ring and put it onto the conveyor belt, we're going to, um, bro. We're going to uh, reverse our conveyor belt so that the ring will go into this redirect and into the claw, and then we can raise the arm to score on the wall sticks. It's powered by two pneumatic pistons right here. And then we also, um, yeah, that's how we score on the mobile goals. Run. And how about for the future? What kind of changes do you really want to make to uh, maybe get a little more efficiency out of this? So in the future, we want to change um, our redirect to possibly a Lady Brown because we figured that it's a lot faster as the con it can transfer from the conveyor belt into the lady round a lot faster and right now the um, the redirect is also kind of slow and ineffective and we another possibility would also be a fish mag. Chloe on here uh, let's spin the robot around and take a look I really like uh, what you're doing on this uh, clamp here by the way too really neat for that uh, and the auto line that goes into that uh, it's a little actually I think one of the more unique ones I've seen for that all together so walk me through uh, how it works. Um, so our robot is a two pneumatic single acting um, clamp and it, it has rubber bands to pull it back and um, we noticed that 
um, we would always clamp at a bad angle. So we added this, this auto align, which will spin the goal if it, if it comes in, so um, we can clamp it at a better angle. And for you, uh, looking at you know future plans, you think your team's going to stick with this overall? It's been working out for you. Yeah, it's been working pretty well and pretty consistently. So we probably are going to stick with this for the rest yeah. of the year. Yeah, I mean, I watch you on the field. You just have so much control on mobile goals. I think that's such an important thing to have in this game. So great job putting that all together, uh, Max. Let's talk about the uh, joinker uh, on your robot. I think you call it the uh, that was it the cheese grater or something else like that. No. We have, like, we have a awesome. doink. So talk to me more about that, and then maybe a couple of the aesthetic choices on your robot too. All right, so we have a doinker, but we call it a cheese wedge because it's funny. And then like, we can use it to sweep the corner. Like, we sweep the corner to get the rings out so we can put the goal in. But another unique feature about this is that we can drive up to it and steal opponent goals with it. So it's like a uh, it's kind of like a goal clamp on the front, basically. And another important part of our robot is the Robosaurus. It makes us five times faster. It makes us like 10 times more consistent and stuff. It's like really good. So would you recommend other teams implement this five times faster Robosaurus on their robot? Yes. yes. So really cool that. And then I want to ask you for Matt strategy wise on the goal rush on that. Have you uh, so far used that mechanism as a goal rush so far? Because like on the... On one of the sides, there's like a goal in the middle. So then some teams use it to score on it. So then we can just drive up to it and then steal it. So, yeah. then, so then it messes up their auton kind of. Awesome. So yeah, great strategy that goes into that. Let's talk about sensors here. Uh, Elvin, uh, Anna, and Katya are, Katya are going to be talking more about that. So walk me through the different sensors on your robot. So we have a bunch of sensors on our robot, but I'll be talking about the back two sensors. Uh, so like we have a AI vision sensor and a distance sensor in the back of our robot. So a quick overview of how it works is that the AI vision sensor takes a snapshot of what it sees and then it determines if the mobile goes on its left or right. And then the distance sensor, like when the robot's turning towards the goal, the distance sensor keeps scanning the distance. And then if the distance suddenly changes, we know there's a mobile goal in front of the robot because like, if it's here and then it's turning and then like the distance suddenly changes to like this one to this one, uh, it can like, well, it can like detect the sun change in distance and then it'll clamp the mobile goal. How are you actually doing your autonomous programming? Can you walk me through that a little bit? Oh, so on one side, we score the alliance wall stick with the arm and the redirect mechanism first and then we get the momo go in the middle using these two sensor pairs and then we score three rings on that because we get the two rings in the middle and the one ring on the side and then we touch the ladder so we can get the awp by ourselves well in normal events not awesome. in signatures anna what other uh, sensors are you using on your robot we use the inertial sensor for our rotational position it is a three axis it's right here it's three axis gyroscope and three axis accelerator. And we use the turn to heading function um, that helps us, uh, like our rotational, that tells us the rotational position. We also use gyro PID to, for more controlled rotations. We also have two sensors that are right here, right here, the limit switch and the optical sensor. So when the ring is intaked, um, It'll lift up this uh, little tray, which will release this uh, limit switch and um, send a signal to the optical sensor to take a snapshot of what it's seeing. And uh, if it's the correct colored ring, then it's going to uh, con like put it on the goal. And if it's not the col correct colored ring, then it's going to unclamp the goal and shoot it off. Well, fifth dimension, uh, congratulations on a phenomenal machine and your continued amazing performance as we're filming this 3 0 so far at this event. So we can't wait to see how you do, and we really hope that we get a chance to see you back at Worlds again. So good luck the rest of the way. Add a Robosaurus to your robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. 
The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu vex to learn more and apply.